Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to part 4 of Darwell20's Mod Spotlight of Just Dire Things. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the rest of the machines that are available from Just Dire Things. We're going to jump right in, because some of these ones are pretty cool and not crazy complicated, but they got some cool features to them that might take some going into. So let's jump right in and take a look at our first block, the sensor. The simple sensor, uh, if you followed the pattern of what all these blocks do and how they function, will sense things in front of it. So again, it has a facing direction, indicated by the little Cylon eye there. And you can rotate around and decide which block you want to face from. Now, all block sides except where it's facing uh, connect on redstone. So you'll notice that if I do something like this, it's not connected. But if I do something like that, it is. And the fact that the redstone signal just turned on probably gives you a little bit of a hint as to what the simple sensor does. So the simple sensor can do some simple things. It can detect blocks in front of it. Now, because it does have this one slot here, this is a single filter slot. Uh, and what this does is let you detect if there's any particular blocks in front of the simple sensor. Um, so normal thing, speed and ticks, this is how frequently it checks and will update. So for example, um, if we place a block here, let's do something like this, it'll take up to a second for it to detect. Unless you have it at tick speed one, then it'll be immediate. Obviously, uh, with all things tick speed, you want to keep this at a place where it's not going to overstress your server too much, but you know, you do you. Um, in addition, we've got the, um, you know, allow list or deny list. And we've got whether or not it emits a weak or strong redstone signal. Um, those of you who are modded Minecraft aficionados might know the difference between a weak and strong redstone signal. But if it's in weak mode, um, it won't transmit through blocks. Um, like so, it's on, but it's not transmitting through a block. If it's in strong mode, it will transmit through a block. And that works pretty well. So up to you if you want to emit a weak or strong redstone signal. Now let's talk about the sensor, because this is where things get pretty crazy, and Dyer is just a little bit proud of himself. Uh, so in allow list mode, you can specify uh, what type of block triggers the sensor. Uh, so for example, uh, if we put cobblestone in the allow list mode, it will only emit if there's co co cobblestone in front of it. If we put dirt in there, it, it won't sense dirt, uh, but it will, or it won't sense cobblestone, but it will... Uh, emit signal for dirt. That's not the cool part though. The cool part is that you can detect block states. And to do that, you simply need to have something in the filter. So for example, you can put an oak door in there and now it's gonna detect any oak door. But instead, if you right click on the filter slot, you will get a list of all possible block states for this block. Uh, so for example, doors have a facing state, which is what direction it's facing, whether it's the top or bottom half. Uh, something about the hinge, whether or not it's open, and whether or not it's receiving a redstone signal. So for example, by default, all settings are set to any, means it'll detect any door. If you want to detect only open doors, you could change this to open is true. And you'll notice it's no longer emitting a redstone signal because the door is not open. If you open the door, it is now emitting a redstone signal. And if you close the door, ba -ba 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 -ba. Cool. So any block that has any kind of block state attribute to it uh, can be can be manipulated in this way. Uh, so for example, uh, I don't know why you would want to do this, but sure, why not? Let's use the lever state, right? So we'll drag the lever in there and we'll say uh, only if the lever is powered, emit a redstone signal. <laughs> I don't know why you would do this, but it's a thing you can do. Okay, uh, so basically, again, like any, 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 any block with any kind of block state, uh, you can go ahead and uh, detect uh, and sense its attributes for. So for example, if you put a piston there, right, um, you could say, hey, the piston's attribute of extended or facing, right? So extended true, it would only emit if this thing were extended. Cool. Uh, and you can cycle back to any, by the way, if you, uh, you know, want to leave it as is. And that's how the block state filter works. Now, the simple sensor can detect more than just blocks. It can detect air. Oh, cool. So, you know, eh, detect if there's air, detect if there's not air. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Kind of the reverse of blocks. It can also detect mobs. Are there any hostile mobs in front of it? Nope. Are there any passive mobs in front of it? Nope. I mean... Oh, we need this in denialist mode, and you'll see why in a second. You can probably guess if you remember how the blasts are. All right. Are there any passive mobs in front of it? Yep. Cool. Um, are there any passive mobs that are pigs in front of it? Allow list. Yes. 
sheep. Nope. Didn't count for sheep because we were filtering. But deny list, uh, empty, then it doesn't matter. Sheep, pig, all good. Uh, adults, yes. Children, yes. You can filter on those. Players, yep, that works. And any entity living. Oh, and items. It can detect if there's items in the world in front of it or not. Pretty cool. So that is the simple sensor. Uh, you can detect blocks, you can detect air, you can detect block states, you can detect all different kinds of entities, and you can filter uh, with one filter slot, and it'll emit a redstone signal depending on whether the things in front of it match the conditions you give. Now, you can probably assume at this point in the mod spotlight what the advanced sensor is gonna do. But just in case you can't, let's go ahead and demonstrate it. But spoiler alert, it does do a few moves from it. It's definitely more advanced, right? Uh, so there's new buttons, there's new things you can do. So just like with the previous one, uh, you can do something like this, this, and that. And now we have a big area of effect. We're going to detect inside of it. So just like with the other thing, we can detect for certain blocks. So for example, uh, if I went and placed a block in there, you'll see that it's going to emit a redstone signal because there are in fact a whole bunch of blocks in there. Um, even without this block, it's detecting the existence of fence blocks. So there's a bunch. It's greater than zero. If we bumped that up to 10, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, ten. 10. So like, let's make it 20. Greater than 20 blocks in there? Nope. Oh, now there's greater than 20 blocks in there. That's cool. Oh, now there's not. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, or you can do less than. So are there less than 20 blocks? Yes. Man, I'm gonna need more blocks for this demonstration. What I get for teleporting away all my items? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, no, now there's not less than 20 blocks. Are there exactly 20 blocks? Well, let's make sure that you're not in toggled on mode. Oh, there we go. Exactly 20 blocks, no more, no less. Cool. Greater than, less than, or equals. Those are how you can do that. And that applies to pretty much all of the, uh, of the different things you might expect it to. So uh, first off, let's put this, this, and that. Uh, so hey, good example, fence gates. Let's use that as a filter. Uh, allow list, fence gates, and we'll do uh, greater than zero. So is there greater than zero fence gates? Yes. But you know what? I only want to know if the fence gate is open. So open true. Nope, definitely not. Unless, of course, I open the fence gate. Now there's an open fence gate. Now there's a closed fence gate. Now there's an open fence gate. Now there's a closed fence gate. You get the idea. Cool. Uh, but you know what? Let's go back to detecting any fence gate. Yep, no, nope, that works. But obviously, if we do that and that, uh, yep, nope, nope, don't exist no more. Because there's no fence gates inside that area. Ba -doop -ba -doop. Back to good. Okay, uh, what else can we do with this? Oh, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, we can filter on air. Are there greater than zero air blocks? You know it, there's definitely some air blocks inside that space. All right, so now let's check out if there's any hostile mobs inside that area. Nope, not greater than zero, but uh, I think you guys can see where this is going. Uh, so we got ourselves a zombie. Yep, there's greater than zero. How about greater than one? Nope, only greater than zero. How about less than two? Yep. How about equal to one? Yep. Makes sense to me. Now it's not equal to one. It's less than one, but it definitely ain't greater than zero. You get the idea. Uh, you can also, by the way, uh, you know, do something like uh, this. That should work. Right? Uh, so allow list. Zombies don't count. Zombie villager does count. Cool. Empty denial. Cool. Uh, same for passives, same for adults, same for children, same for player, same for all living, and you can count and count up the total amount. So for example, if you wanted to see if there were, I don't know, three powered levers on, you could put one, two, three, one, two, three. That actually should be working. Did I do something wrong there? Powered true target blocks. It would help if I was targeting blocks. There you go. See? So any three, as long as they're all three are powered, 
or any three are powered in that space. Works pretty well. So that's the sensor. Uh, it can sense things. You can you can specify, you know, all kinds of cool stuff to sense on. So here's a fun thing you could set up. You wanna see this? All right, you ready? Let's gonna sense for greater than five sheep. And if that's true, we're gonna emit a redstone signal, which will turn off the sheep feeder. Is that cool? So we're gonna passive mobs. We don't need to filter by sheep. I think it'll just work, right? Uh, so if we throw a couple sheep in there. Okay. So that should be cool. All I need to do is now specify the area. So let's turn off this render. Let's move this one over to here. Cool. So now, because there's more than six sheep in that area of effect, it stopped feeding them. So see, no longer trying to feed because there's too many sheep. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. And hey, since you're emitting a redstone signal, <laughs> let's also click and what we're gonna do uh, in this direction. How's that look? A little bit too far on the X. There you are. Uh, only when you're emitting a redstone signal. And let's bump up the speed a little bit here. Hey, how did you guys get out? Did I leave a door open? Oh, I know what's happening. You're clicking the gate, aren't you? Uh, let's make sure that you're clicking on passive mobs. Yeah. Get back in there. Stop misbehaving. Yeah, don't let it click on the on the fence door. Okay, so now we're, we're back to greater than five. Sheep. So now you are going to left click with a sword. But only when you're receiving a redstone signal. See? And now, because it's less than five, or it's not greater than five, right? So it's feeding more, and then it kills. And if you want, you can have it pass target adults only. That would probably be the extra smart way to go. And there's a passive mob farm. Throw an item collector on there if you want, or just make sure your sword has the teleport ability. Up to you. How's that for a passive mob farm? So now he'll just, you know, keep on feeding maybe just adults. That would probably be smart so we don't waste our wheat. We'll let those babies grow up on their own. Eventually we'll get more. Eventually it'll be more than six. And then when it's more than six, it'll kill one and then be done because now we're less than six again. Cool? Pretty neat, right? Some cool stuff you could do with this, I'm just saying. So that is the advanced and simple sensor. Uh, they can sense and count the number of things in an area for you and help you determine what's going on. Uh, now let's take a look at the dropper. The simple dropper is, I needed a simple dropper. <laughs> what do you want from me? Uh, now, uh, I've always uh, kind of appreciated droppers and there's so many different kinds of droppers from so many different mods. Obviously the main annoyance with vanilla is items tend to, you know, drop in totally random directions, right? Uh, not so much with my droppers, obviously. Uh, we're gonna do the standard cool thing, which is you drop straight down every time, all the time, okay? So I'm gonna throw some cobblestone in there. It's gonna drop straight down, just great. Now you can also specify what direction it drops in. So if I wanted to drop up, it would kind of drop up. If I wanted it to drop north, it would drop north and south and then west and then east. So you can set what direction it drops in. Cool. You can set how fast it drops. And if you want, you can set um, how much it drops. Cool. So let's make it drop, I don't know, 12, 10 at a time. How does that sound? 10 every 20 ticks, 10 every one tick. You get the idea. Uh, and then same standard approach uh, with, you know, redstone signaling, whereas a pulse will only drop uh, one set of items so if I made that 20, it would drop 20 items per pulse. Cool. Um, and you get the idea. So the simple dropper, uh, it's pretty simple, but you have a lot of control over exactly how it drops, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, and you can obviously have it face, you know, whatever direction you want. And if it's down, it's gonna go right down, right in front of the block it's on. But if you want it to go like north, that's totally a thing you could do too. Now the advanced dropper is the first one to break the pattern a little bit. Uh, the advanced dropper does not have an area of effect that it can drop in, but it does have an offset. 
So you can specify um, where it's going to drop at further away from the block. So for example, if we set render mode here, uh, it's not gonna drop over an area because I didn't really feel like there was a whole need for that, uh, but we can totally you know, move it wherever and then throw some cobblestone in there and it's gonna start dropping. Cool. Um, and all the other things that you just saw in terms of what direction it drops in and all that good stuff still apply. Um, so you know, use this how you see fit, the speed, the, the drop amount, you get the idea. All that stuff still does exactly what you would expect. Uh, now that said, this is also one of the few machines that has nine slots for interacting with. And the reason for that is because of uh, the dropper feature for filtering. Um, so now the filter doesn't filter what, well, it kind of filters what can drop, but it also filters in what order it drops. And you have to have everything in the filter for it to drop the set of resources that you want it to drop in the order that you want it to drop. Those of you who are fans of Elemental Craft, I 100% got the idea for this block from that mod. So let's take a look. Um, so let's say we wanted to drop certain order of items in a specific uh, way. So let's do something like, uh, I don't know, iron ingots, right? Uh, that would be a cool way to go. So we would say first drop cobblestone, then drop oak logs, then drop iron ingots. So if I put these guys in there, what it's gonna do is drop cobble, then oak, and then iron ingot. Cool. And you'll notice it stopped dropping. Um, let's see, I wanna put that back for a sec. So it stopped dropping after we ran out of iron because iron's required. So it won't even try to drop uh, any blocks until it has enough. So if I put three iron ingots in there now, it's gonna drop cobble, then oak, then iron, following the tick speed rule. Got it? If we shrink that down to one tick, then it's gonna go boop, 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 and it's gonna stop when it, you know. Now, if we got rid of the iron ingot from the filter here, it would have just cobble and oak logs in the filter, and then it would do all of them like that. Pretty cool. Looking pretty good. And if you put this in pulse mode, um, it will do the same deal, but on a pulse. So when you pulse it, and again, following the tick speed, so let's make it half a second, each pulse will do one set of resources, provided you have all three resources that you want. If you don't have all three resources, then you're out of luck. Cool. Um, so that's how that guy works. Um, I don't even know why there's a compare NBT. So this, this button should not exist on all UIs, but you know, they kind of do. This one now without any filter will just drop the first item. And it always does the first item um, unless you do the filter and then it'll do all the things, right? Um, so if we did that, it would clear out the first set of items and then clear out the second set of items. So the dropper, a little advanced, but hopefully that should be useful uh, for all y'all out there. I thought it was pretty neat. Ooh, ooh, we got to the swapper. I've been looking forward to the swapper. This one also breaks the rules a little bit. Uh, it's gonna get a new texture to match the fact that it's made out of blaze gold rather than ferrocore. Most simple machines are made out of ferrocore. Most advanced machines are made out of celeste gem, but I'm starting to break that mold and make it so some of the fancier machines, the, the first version of it will be made out of blaze gold and the second version of it will be made out of eclipse alloy because uh, of tier two and tier four versus, you know, tier one and tier three. But you get the idea. So the swapper, uh, you're gonna want two of them. Doesn't do anything by itself. The swapper is a pretty straightforward block. One of the few blocks which is on pulse mode by default. The simple swapper will swap two things in the world with its partner. So you'll notice that right now it is not bound to any partner. All we have to do is right click with a wrench and you'll see the wrench has now been bound to that swapper. We right click that wrench and we can see that it is now bound to the overworld. 3426556. That's you, right? 3426556. This is 3466556. And that's where he's bound. 3466556. We're currently in block swapping mode, which means we're gonna we're gonna swap blocks. And again, this happens on redstone signal. So uh if I give this guy a redstone pulse, it just swapped the blocks in those positions. 
And yes, it did in fact swap them, and I can demonstrate that like so. Cool. Uh, and you can swap from either side, really, because you're swapping the blocks, right? It swaps. So even if you if you didn't have a block here, we're going to swap air with oak log. Boom. Air there, oak log there. Pretty cool? I think so. I think it's definitely cool. You can also ignore blocks or target blocks. Now, why would you want to ignore blocks? Well, because you might want to swap entities too. You can target hostile entities or passive entities or adults or children or players or all living or items or all entities and all items. One of the few that has that option. Uh, so for example, target passive, okay? Now, entities do not swap. Entities get teleported to their relative position on the other side. So for example, if the pig's right here and we push it, it works, but it doesn't swap them back, okay? So if the pig's sitting here, it won't, it won't swap them back. Block swapping makes sense because like you kind of have to swap. I might make that a UI option though, and then it would only teleport the block if there was air on the other side, but that might be a change that comes in the future. But yeah, basically the swapper will, oh, that's right, we have to target passive on that side too. Uh, now you don't need this to be in pulse mode. You could have this on just ignored, right? And then any entity that happens to wander into that block will go every 20 ticks. Uh, and didn't I say you could target players? Yeah, I did. Ignored. Oh, hello. And again, you're going to go relative to exactly where you were. So notice how I'm... You can barely tell I got teleported. If you're looking, if you're looking at the ground in the right way, you can't even tell I got teleported. But I did because it's putting you in the exact position relative to the last... So, like, if I'm in this corner right here. Yep, I definitely got teleported. You can tell because of the sound. You can't tell by looking at the ground. That's actually kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, Dire Geek's out about his own stuff. Um, go ahead, put, uh, you know, player like that. Yeah, there's some, there's some ridiculousness you can do. Uh, now let's put this back on pulse mode because, because there's something else that's neat about this. Uh, if I break one of these, remember how I said blocks retain their settings? Hey, this guy remembers that he's bound to the overworld in a specific spot, but he can't find the block anymore. Where did it go? Don't worry. Once I place it down, it'll reconnect it. And now it's bound over there. And this guy rebound himself, but it's in a different world coordinates. Uh, so hey, guess what? Hello. It worked. Hey, I'm gonna go mining. Hey, I've been mining for a really long time down in my cave, but I want to get home. Oh no, there's a creeper. Real quick, let's go home. Ah, deposit all my mining goodies. All right, now back to where I was. Yep, that works. Cool. I wonder if this works cross-dimensionally, says the guy who wrote the mod and specifically coded it to. Mm, let's find out anyway, because you know me. We should, we should, we should, be, we should be sure, right? You never know. Maybe there's a bug. Guess what? It should work. If it doesn't, then yeah, it's only a bug. Oh, yep, that worked. That's cool. Perfect. So, two important notes about the swapper. One, it can swap entities. Two, it can swap blocks. Three, uh, when you break it and place it back down, it can reconnect to its partner. Assuming you haven't also broken the partner. If you break them both, they won't be able to reconnect to each other. It can only reconnect if one of them is in the world. Um, so don't break both of them at the same time. That would not work. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's about all there is to the simple swapper. You know, you could target items. I think items work. Pretty sure I said items to work, right? Yeah, I do, I do that. And then that, and then, yeah, that works. Cool. Oh, did I, uh, did I also mention it totally works with tile entities like chests? Yeah, no, it totally, totally does. No problemo. And yes, uh, people who like to question this, it does follow the rules of forge no relocation, so you can't teleport blocks that have been flagged to not be moved. Uh, and also it uh, blocks certain things like beds and doors. Uh, and for mod pack makers and server owners, there is a block tag called Just Dire Things Swapper Deny. If you want your block to not be moved by the swapper, you can either uh, do that or you can use the uh, forge no relocation tag.
If you're questioning why I'm suddenly in creative mode and using a building gadget to build myself a 9x9, nine nine, you probably don't have a good guess as to what's going to happen. But some of you may. Well, this is a nice house, right? I'm cooking up some oak logs. I got a bunch of stuff in my chest. Let's check out the Advanced Swapper. As you probably have guessed by now, the Advanced Swapper can do things like the Swapper does, but in a large and lovely AoE. So let's do something like, I don't know. You know, I don't even need to do that. Let's do this here, okay? Back to survival for me. We can bind our two swappers and i'm going to make sure render area is on so that you see this important nuance of the swappers render area uh and they should probably both have some semblance of power as well so uh when two swappers are bound to each other their radius will match their offset doesn't have to so let's see what i mean by that see that guy over there watch what happens when i bump this up see him automatically changing yeah that's cool right so let's uh, offset this guy a little bit so that he's here. And then what is that? The Z direction? No, it is the X direction. That seems cool. Yeah, that works for me. Uh, I could probably shrink that down just a little bit on the Y. So let's make it like that and then that. Cool. Now you were totally going to want to move that up somewhere. Let's put it like way over here and maybe maybe off in the x direction let's move it to the let's move it like in that direction over there does that sound cool i like that so i think you all know what's about to happen right so we're targeting blocks we are ignoring entities we don't have any kind of uh filtering going on and it's in pulse mode button please oh that worked i have a little bugs to fix with uh making sure we don't pop off pressure plates and, and, and stuff. A few minor bugs to fix on this one, but you get the idea. Uh, and then we can swap it back. <laughs> That's cool. And as predicted, all the all the tile data stayed. Uh, now, if I happen to be inside, can I, can I reach that? How about with a lever? I bet I can reach it with a lever. Probably should have put this thing a little bit closer to my door. Oh, I didn't teleport with it. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Target player. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> and we'll stick a button on this guy and teleport it back. Cool beans. So you get the gist. Uh, so the, the block swapper can do big area of effect swaps uh, and, and swap it from one position to another. Just like the simple swapper, you can 100% uh, pick this thing up and it will retain all its partneriness. Except I'm pretty sure this thing was set to teleport. So my advanced swapper may have teleported to a chest somewhere. I think over here. Oh, sure, why not? There it is. Are you bound? You are bound. Hooray! And you're going to go there. Uh, you know what? Let's move our house. I'm moving the wrong thing. Now remember, it is a swapper. So if there's other stuff in the area of effect, it's, um, you know, going to swap it. There you go. And then over here should have uh, some of the, yep, there's all that grass. Bring it back, please. Oh, your, bolt, your, your signal's still on. Bring it back, please. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. What can I say? I nerd out a little bit about that stuff. So the advanced swapper uh, swaps, swaps entities, swap blocks. You can filter on what blocks you want to swap. Uh, so I don't know if I ever tried this, but let's hope it works. <laughs> it totally worked. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Totally worked. Totally worked. Wasn't sure if it would. Uh, same for entities. Uh, you can filter on, um, you know, passive. You can filter on child. 
So if you had like, I don't know, a farm where you were breeding and you want to teleport all the children over to another farm, you could do that. So how about these two bound swappers uh, that are set to target... You target adults and you be ignored. Oh, and uh, ignore blocks. And you ignore blocks, target child, and ignore. Does that sound cool? So what do you think this is going to do? Uh, children get teleported over there, adults tell back here. Sound cool? Let's see if, let's see if it works. I don't know. Uh, you know, I haven't tested all facets of this mod. I just thought, like, hey, that would be a cool thing to test. Oh, that's right. They don't eat wheat, do they? Uh, pigs eat carrots. I know vanilla Minecraft, I promise. And remember, they teleport relative to where they were. And then, once this dude grows up all the way, he will be teleported back as an adult to the original pen. Right? Because that's what this is configured to do. Target adults. So when he grows up, he should be teleported back. <laughs> it worked. Ah, it's fun. It's fun. There's stuff you can do with this, let me tell you. And the final gadget to show you, brand new, just added it yesterday, is the player accessor. Now, uh, anybody who tries this out, do me a favor and tell me if you find any weird bugs with it. But it should work. Player accessor, uh, if you've played with Pneumaticraft, you've seen a block like this before. It basically allows you to interact with the player's inventory uh, through all things interfaces. So if you want to use laser IO, uh, you could totally do that. If you just want to use hoppers, you could totally just do that. Um, and then for each side of the block, the up, north, west, east, down, and south, this doesn't have a facing direction, so I didn't make it, like, back and front. I made it, like, you know, cardinal directions. Um, but basically you can specify whether it's going to interact with your inventory slots, your armor slots, your offhand slot, which for some reason in Minecraft is a completely different list of items, uh, or, <laughs> or back to inventory slots. So, for example, if you put a hopper up here and you gave it wheat, it's going to start dumping wheat into your inventory. Cool. Um, if you put a laser IO here and you put a chest and you put an extract card on this side, or yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put item card here and I'm going to put a stocking card here uh, and you're going to move eight items at a time and you're going to keep a full stack of cobblestone in my inventory at all times. You know what? I would like you to be in regulate mode. Cool. So now he's going to regulate out my inventory and oh, now I don't have enough. So it's going to start giving it back to me. See how that works? Should work cross dimensionally. Should work pretty cool. And then every time I place a block, it's just going to refill my inventory. And if I have too many, uh, it'll extract. Cool. Good deal. Uh, so that is uh, the player accessor. Now, if you wanted to interact with your armor slots, uh, for example, if we put a hopper up here and we put some diamond armor inside the hopper, it's just going to go into my inventory. Uh, but if we toggle that to be armor slots on the top, now you'll notice it equipped the diamond armor for me. Um, and if you pay attention to my armor bar down here, you'll see it filling up as I do this. Uh, and you can do the same thing. And obviously, it's only going to be able to interact with your armor. So it won't go into my player inventory. It'll only keep trying to insert into my helmet slot. As soon as I remove this one, it inserted it for me. Pretty cool. Not too shabby. Uh, and extract uh, works the same way for armor. Uh, so, for example, if we wanted to do something like this, uh, and we set you on the bottom to be down armor slots, see it was already extracting from my from my inventory. Uh, now, if I have armor equipped, it's going to extract it and pull it out into the hopper below. Uh, and then finally, offhand works probably as you can assume. Uh, we do that, and then we put like torches in there for example, and the torches went into my offhand. Same with a shield or, you know, pretty much anything else. So that's the player accessor from Just Dire Things. And I think that's everything. Did I miss anything? I don't know. Well, there's more stuff coming. I got I got a bunch of ideas for things I want to do. I'd like some teleporty things so players can teleport around the world because you know I love teleporting. Um, I'm considering armor. I would, I probably am going to do armor. I'm just debating whether I want to do like four tiers of armor or maybe just like one or two. Um, I definitely want to do like the standard armor abilities of uphill step assist and run faster and jump higher, all that cool stuff. Um, I just want to, 
if you've noticed, I've tried to put my own personal twist on a lot of the standard stuff that you've seen in modded Minecraft. So like, it's 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 all a lot of the stuff we've seen before, uh, but my own personal twist on it, my own approach, uh, and then some of the controls and abilities that I've wanted, like you know, making sure there's fine grained redstone control, um, you know, and 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 the ability for the player to like choose how it works. I'm also kind of going for like a, the block doesn't do everything for you. So it's not like you just put down a block and you get a tree farm. But guess what? If you combined my, uh, my, my eclipse alloy axe and my block breaker with a filter uh, and some of these other things, like you could definitely build a tree farm with all the things in my mod. You could build an animal farm with all the things in my mod. I probably want to get some kind of mob spawning thing. Maybe like a cursed earth, but like, again, I want to have like some kind of twist on it. Something like you know, different. So we'll figure it out. Uh, but this is it for now. But again, it's still in beta. So if you find any bugs, please report them on the GitHub. Uh, for now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the Mod Spotlight. Four parts. I'm actually surprised it took that long to go through everything. But to be fair, the blocks have a lot of features and functionalities to them. So, you know, I'm just saying. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.